you had Marvion. And you look back at the Arkansas game, do you feel like the team was adequately prepared for that game, or do you kind of feel like y'all went into a buzzsaw not suspecting what happened? I feel like we was prepared physically and mentally. It's just uh, when it was time to execute, we didn't. Uh, and that's on all three phases of the ball. We didn't do what we was capable of doing and what we practiced all week. You know, things wasn't clicking how we wanted to. But I think we was we was prepared. Danny, go ahead. DeMarvion, when you guys went over film or from what you immediately remember after the game, the problems that you had, do you feel that those are easy fixes or are those things that, hey, we need to kind of buckle down and really work on the things that popped up in this game? It was definitely easy fixes. Uh, Moro said it the other day, communication-wise. And, uh, you know, we just glad it happened then. Uh, the stuff that we need to work on with Exposed Saturday. So, you know, we glad we got that out the way. Uh, we able to work on that and this week and on into the conference play. Brian, you're up. Marvion, talking about communication, um, how, did, how do you judge that? I mean, how do you judge if everyone is talking enough or everyone knows what's going on or look out for this or watch that? You know, how, how do you judge that? Uh, basically, when you see a lot of people on the field, you know, either, you know, nonverbal communication or verbal communication, making sure everybody on the same page. If one player uh, does the wrong call or doesn't, does his, uh, doesn't do his assignment, then the commun communication somewhere uh, between the sideline and between the players were uh, not good enough. So anytime somebody is not on the right page, then the communication is not where we want it to be. Cedric, go ahead. Hey, DeMarviana, Coach Sarkeesian talked about the sheer size of SEC teams, you know, through his experience. Where did Arkansas rank up front size-wise against teams that you faced in your career? Uh, I definitely, they were definitely one of the biggest, uh, but I've seen a lot of big O-lines uh, prior to that game. So, uh, but, you know, that's how SEC recruit. They like their guys big up front. It's a different game than the Big 12. So, you know, they like more bigger bodies, uh, you know, to be able to move more bigger bodies on the other side of the ball. So, you know, it was definitely big, but I, I, I've seen some that was bigger. Uh, Blue, you're up. Yeah, DeMarvion, you and you and Moro and, and Deshaun all talk about executing and, and communicating, and it, it sounds simple. But when you're in the middle of a game, how difficult is it to fix some of those things that are going on? And how did y'all maybe try to fix some of those things in the middle of the game against Arkansas? Uh, it's very difficult, especially when you don't do it as well at practice. So uh, basically just working on it there in practice is the only way to fix that. But uh, during the game, it's basically just making sure everybody got their eyes on the sideline because, I mean, if we're not communicating well earlier on in the game and uh, the game is not going our way, and it's going to make it even harder when the crowd gets into it. So basically making sure everybody is aligned and assigned and uh, know what they're supposed to be doing is the biggest thing. But really communicating at practice is the only way to fix that. Good time for a few last ones. Chip, go ahead. Marvian, um, when you look up at the end of the game and see that Arkansas's run for 333 yards, what, you know, what's your reaction? Uh, that we didn't do our job as the front seven, uh, you know, regardless of what the score says at the end of the game, if they rushed that many yards, then we didn't do our job. So, uh, you know, that's one thing that we're getting fixed right now at practice and in the film room, uh, because like I said, it, it all starts up front and that's on the offensive side and defensive side of the ball. Dennis, go ahead. Hey, Marvin, how, how, surprised were you that they were able to move it like that but also how how personal did you guys take it your unit on, on defense it, how much did it sting how much did you see your guys not liking that result uh, it hurt a lot and you can tell by uh, the guys faces in the locker room and uh, on the ride back that's not something we ever want to see again I can tell you that and uh, we def definitely taking it personal because you know that that's on us the front seven you know, making sure everybody's lined up and, uh, you know, uh, getting the ball on the ground before it gets to the second, third level. So that's one thing that we've uh, definitely taken personal. And uh, 
we're we're trying not to let that happen again. Well, how how is Casey regarded in the in the locker room? Uh, you know, he's he's been that uh, guy since he's been here, uh, the backup guy. So he knows what it takes to uh, step up and lead a team. He's done it before. Uh, so I, I'm sure he's ready. I know he's ready. And uh, Coach Sark is, you know, preparing him for that. Last one, Chip, go ahead. Marvin, as far as the missed tackles, do you know how many y'all missed or, you know, what was said about it from the coaching staff? Uh, I don't know the exact number. I know it's too many. Uh, one is too many. So, but I don't know the exact number. That's really one thing we're emphasizing this week is tackling better uh, because there's a lot of plays where uh, it could have been dead if we would have just tackled the ball carrier. But that's one thing that we're really emphasizing this week. Yeah, Casey, um, getting to start again is something you've been waiting a, a while for, um, I guess almost four years now. What's kind of your mindset going into this uh, game and going forward? Oh, yeah, I just I just realized today that the last time I started the game was November 2017, which is crazy. Um, but I'm excited. Um, I've waited a long time for this opportunity. And uh, I don't know, I just think it's a testament to perseverance and hard work. And uh, I'm excited for this team, the opportunity that we have to uh, bounce back and to continue to, to continue to push forward and press on towards the goals that we still have uh, at hand. Dennis, go ahead. Casey, you just said it. Uh, perseverance. Did did the thought ever occur to you? Because you wouldn't have been blamed for waiting your turn to like I didn't get the job. I'm jumping. Did it ever occur to you to to transfer out and 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 just talk about why is it, it was important for you to stick? Uh, I mean, for me at this point, uh, like I, I told you guys before, I'm very uh, I'm very thorough in my thought process and my approach to things. But I mean, at this point, uh, I mean, I'm already in this thing and, and I've waited my opportunity and I've waited so long. It's like, uh, there's no way that I could just uh, quit and, and, and let up at this point. So uh, my thought process was, um, yeah, it hurt for a second and I'm gonna let it sting, um, but I'm gonna wake up the next day. Uh, literally, I just, I took a day to kind of, you know, think about it and soak it all in. And then as soon as the Monday comes around, uh, I just woke up and I went back to work and I said, no matter what happens, I'm gonna be ready to play and I'm gonna take this thing uh, over when I'm uh, when the opportunity presents itself. And so that was my thought process um, and, and and kind of my uh, mindset going through it. It was just trust the process, like I said, and just continue to persevere and work hard. And um, my mindset was, you know, if I'm not gonna get named uh, week one and, and it's not gonna be give it to me, then I have to go take it myself. Um, and I have to show my teammates that I'm just gonna continue to work hard um, and, and be the best I can be every day. And so that's the attitude I'm having with it. Anwar, you're up. Casey, does um, anything change from you from a preparation standpoint coming, because you've been coming off the bench pretty much your entire time here at Texas. Now as a starter, does anything change for you from a prep standpoint this week? No, nothing has changed. Um, I think I've told you guys before, like even last year and the years that I was uh, a backup uh, behind Sam, and even the last few weeks, uh, nothing changes as far as my preparation. I still, I still watch uh, full game clips on Sunday and Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I watch third down and red zone, and then uh, towards the end of the week on Friday, you know, getting on the bus and going to the hotel, I still uh, just watch uh, cut ups and stuff and go through my playbook and the game call, the game sheet, my tips and reminders, and uh, I'm going to keep the same approach and the same exact uh, habits that have got me to where I am today. Uh, I think that it's worked so far. Um, if anything, I think it's time to turn up the notch just a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit more film study, a little bit more treatment, a little bit more time watching film on my receivers um, and stuff like that. So I wouldn't change my approach. And like I said, I wouldn't do anything different. Bob, go ahead. Casey, can you take us through that period after you didn't, you know, you found out you weren't going to start, what your emotions were um, through that 24, 48 hour period? And then um, how much are you looking at this as, you know, this is this is my job now and, and I'm not going to let it go. Well, like I said, I literally I literally just try to focus on one day at a time. And so, you know, the day that I found out that I was not going to be the name the starter, obviously um, I took that with the, the grain of salt. And, you know, I said, like I said, I'm going to let this hurt and I'm going to let this motivate me. And, um, you know, I turned my phone off and uh, I called my family and, and I watched TV. I watched some football games. Uh, I watched some more film watched a few movies, uh, kind of just relaxed. And then, like I said, I woke up 
uh, on Monday morning and I said, I'm going to, I'm going to make this a positive. Uh, and I'm going to let God use me um, and use my work ethic and my perseverance uh, through this test. Brian, you're up. Casey, <laughs> turning off your phone may have been the smartest thing, um, but, but surely, um, but surely people were in your ear um, coming from all sides and how do you, how do you tune them out or, or don't and, and just say, look, you know, this is the path that is chosen. Well, you know, at the end of the day, like I think about this a lot, you, at the end of the day, the coaches, the team, um, your family, friends, and loved ones, everyone wants the best. They want, they just want the best for you. And um, I think that you have to just kind of be, um, you have to be tactical about, uh, the opinions and the and the and the feedback that you receive, you know, is it positive? Is it negative? Uh, you kind of just have to weigh out um, everyone who's trying to give you opinions. And you know, everyone. Some people say you should do this. Other people say you should do that. You know, some people say wait. Some people say you know you're too good. But at the end of the day, uh, like I tell my family, I appreciate all the love and support and the advice that I get from um, people who reach out to me. But I mean, at the end of the day, I'm going to do uh, what I feel like is best for me. Um, and ultimately, um, because like I said, uh, the season's starting and I'm going to do what's best for the team right now. So that's all I'm focused on. Um, even I'll even say the last few days, like like you guys said, obviously when I went in the game against Arkansas, I wasn't thinking like, hey, what's going to happen next week? What's going to happen two weeks from now? I literally was just focused on, OK, you know, it's first down. What's the call? What's the defense? OK, now I need to execute this play. So I take it one play at a time. Um, and then I woke up on Sunday. Um, I focused on my recovery and focused on my body. Um, then I, I woke up on Monday and focused on practice. And I came in the building and Coach Stark told me that I was going to be named starter. And I'm like, oh, wow, well, there it is. So that's really how it happened. Um, like I said, I can't really worry about the future. I'm just focused on today. And that's the approach that I really try to take, uh, take with this whole process. Yeah, Casey, um, what kind of movies does a competitor like you watch? after getting the disappointing news that he's not the starting quarterback at the University of Texas. It wasn't a chick flick, was it? No, so I'm a big Leonardo DiCaprio fan. Uh, so I love watching like Inception. It's probably my favorite movie of all time. Uh, I like watching like shows that make you think, like Focus or Will Smith, The Book of Eli with Denzel Washington. Movies like that are movies that I like to watch. Uh, Revenant with Leonardo DiCaprio, like those are the type of movies I like to watch, movies that make you think a little bit and you have to sit down for two or three hours uh, and turn your phone off. And so I love going to the movies. We, we do it as a team sometimes. And to me, it's just like, okay, I can step away from reality for a moment in the real world and I can just uh, lock in on this movie. And then as soon as I get done, I got to turn my phone back on and go back to the real world. But that's what I like to do. That's my hobby. Uh, Nick, and, watching, and watching film, of course. Sorry, Casey. <laughs> Nick, go ahead. Yeah, Casey, obviously the last couple of weeks have been, you know, unique in terms of Hudson starting and you kind of waiting in the bullpen. Um, you know, curious, how challenging is it sort of knowing that, you know, one guy's going to go in there and have maybe seven, eight, nine, ten drives to prove himself compared to you have to come in, you maybe have one, two or three to kind of do the same thing. Well, like I said, um, every day we wake up, you know, we're never going to be perfect. We're all human. But the more you can strive for perfection, um, especially at uh, a position like quarterback, it's one of the hardest positions in all sports. Um, it's just the consistency. I think uh, sustaining a level of consistency is, I think I told you guys before, like that's that's what the quarterback is all about. And so it doesn't matter if I get five plays or if I get 50 plays, um, you know, I'm going to try to do, like I literally try to do my best on every play. And um, I think that, like I said, that's my mindset. And I'm trying to focus on that. I'm taking one play at a time, but also to have the ability to, uh, learn and grow from your mistakes. Uh, every day I wake up, I try to say, today is going to be a great day. I cannot fail. I can only learn and grow. Um, and so that's the mindset that I try to approach uh, this process and this quarterback competition with as well. Got time for a couple last ones. Chip, go ahead. Casey, what did, uh, what did Sark tell you uh, when you didn't get the starting job? And what did he tell you uh, on Sunday when he did give you the starting job? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, so it was towards the end of fall camp. Uh, I just, I'm the type of person that wants feedback and I want to know 
hey, how can I get better? How can I improve? Where am I, you know, where am I doing good? Where am I struggling? And so I actually was approaching him and then uh, towards the end of fall camp and like obviously going into game week, he called me in and sat me down and was like, hey, you know, we're going to name uh, Hudson. Uh, this doesn't mean anything for you. You're still going to have, you're still going to get your shot. You're still going to get your opportunity. Um, we want you to just keep working hard. He told me that I was performing uh, at a high level. And like I said, he's, he's the head coach. I've told you guys this before. At the end of the day, he's going to do what he feels is best for the team at the right time. And so that's what he felt like was best at that time. Whether I agree or, or whether I disagree, uh, my job is to literally control what I can control. Um, and so obviously, as a coach, you know, he, he understood that uh, he's had great quarterbacks and he's had um, good quarterbacks also um, as backups. And so he said, you know, we're going to we're going to try to be for you, uh, be there for you during this time. If you need anything, let me know. Uh, but this is what we're doing right now. And we just ask you to continue to work hard and do what you're doing and you'll get your shot. Uh, if You just keep uh, pushing forward. And so uh, fast forward to uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, whenever Coach Stark and I met, he goes, he goes, it's funny how that works. Um, we were just sitting down a few weeks ago and I was telling you just to keep being patient and uh, keep working hard and you'll get your shot. And he goes, and we look up a few weeks later. He said, uh, so I'm going to name you the starter and I'm happy for you. Um, but he goes, he told me I don't need to do anything superhuman. I don't need, do you need to do anything extraordinary. Just keep uh, working hard and executing the plays, um, being smart. And that was it. Jeff, go ahead. So Casey, you just took us back to a few weeks ago when you had that tough conversation with Sark. Um, fast forward to today, how are you different or better as a quarterback than you were a few weeks ago when you uh, lost the job? Um, see, um, I, I don't really like to use the word loss because I don't feel like that I lost the job. I just think that it wasn't my uh, opportunity at that time. Um, and you know, I, when I see people say that I lost the job, I just say, uh, no, they just chose to go with another guy. It doesn't mean that you're not a good player. And in life, um, I talked to this. I talked to my family about this in life. You know, you may you may be a really good person, or you may be really good at what you do. Um, at the end of the day, if someone wants to choose someone else, that doesn't mean that you're not a good player or a good person. That just means that they have maybe a little bit of different preference at that time. And then, so I think that timing is everything. And so um, I just knew that if I continue to get better, if I continue to just show what, what I am good at, um, continue to focus on my strengths um, and, and improving my weaknesses that eventually when the game would come, I would uh, excel in, in these big games and uh, I would be poised and calm under pressure. And I feel like the, I've done a good job of that. Um, but to go back to your question, I, I don't really think uh, that it was, it wasn't a personal conversation. It wasn't, you know, uh, it wasn't anything that there wasn't anything that he said that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It just was, hey, this is what we're going to do. And I said, you know, coach, I appreciate you um, and I respect your decision. And uh, in my mind, I walked out of the office and said, I'm just going to have to do this myself and I'm going to take over when my opportunity comes. Last one, Brian, go ahead. Casey, regardless how you got the opportunity, you have it now. Uh, just big picture wise, how critically important is it for you guys to get back on track this weekend and get some real momentum uh, before Big 12 play starts? Um, I just think, I just think in these, in the game of football and also playing quarterback, um, I just think that we have to just continue to um, focus and be consistent because uh, to go back to the previous question, like there's going to be ups and downs and you kind of just have to be calm and poised. Um, and so I think that this week we don't need to try to reinvent the wheel. We don't need to, Panic. I think Coach Sark talked about this. We don't need to make a knee-jerk reaction. We just need to go back to work and focus on fine-tuning the details on offense, defense, and special teams, and just playing winning football. Um, obviously, that's uh, putting points on the board on offense, running the football, creating explosive plays on defense. is going to be stopping the run, uh, creating turnovers. And on special teams, we have to be on point and flawless. Uh, you know, in the kicking game and uh, being able to punt and uh, you know recover and do well on kickoff and kickoff return. And so. I think that's uh, obviously the goal going into this week against Rice. Um, Rice is uh, another opponent on our schedule. Um, like I said, but for us, it's a nameless and it's faceless opponent. We're just going to try to control what we can control and execute the game uh, game plan on all three phases. And uh, I'm excited about this weekend. I think that uh, it's going to be a fun weekend. I'm excited to be back at home in front of our home crowd. 
Um, and this is a perfect opportunity for us to bounce back and just showcase to everyone what we can do. And uh, like you said, continue that momentum going into conference play.